Good morning. I hear all of this wonderful, happy talking, and that's a good thing. We are so glad you're here. Let me welcome you today. Uh, thank you so much. I have several things to mention at family time today, so I want you to listen closely. Uh, the first thing is make sure you get your bulletin. A lot of things coming up this month that are in here with all the details. So don't miss, you, you, you can get the church app on your smartphone, which is free. You can go to our website. You can go to our Facebook page called The Movement, or you can get a bulletin. And hopefully you won't miss any of the details because this month there are some very important things coming up. All right, I have this card that I would like to read uh, to the church. This is to you. Thank you so much for the flowers, calls, texts, prayers, and support. The Bible's donated in my mother's name is a cherished gift, the one that she would love. Thank you so much. And this is from the Fur family, precious family in our church. And uh, I love it when our people donate Bibles through the Gideons for, for such a wonderful cause. Uh, let's see. I still have my, my bag. Have you gotten yours? How many of you got your bag? And so we got one more week. This ends next Sunday. So get your bag today, fill it up, bring it in sometime during the week or next Sunday, okay? So that is coming up. And, you know, I was asked today, uh, there's not really necessarily a um, pattern for, for the way that I dress on Sunday mornings. It's just kind of what comes up next. Uh, and I was asked, oh, so all your team's lost, so you're wearing black today. Well, no, that wasn't the plan, but if that's how it works, that's how it works. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, we had a fantastic weekend with our men, our CCMP men. We went up to Burnsville, North Carolina. Anybody know where Burnsville is? Oh, really? Wow. How y'all know what, what, <laughs> what's up there? It, so uh, if Spruce Pine, it's, it's up north of Asheville, and we had a phenomenal time. I want you to know that it snowed every day. And in spite of that, we fished and we shot lots of things. Uh, <laughs> we shot a lot. Uh, we ate a lot. We prayed a lot. Uh, we played games and had a wonderful time. But it, it was a great time with our men. I loved it. And our men that were able to go, I know, had a phenomenal time. And our men just thought, you know what? There's one person that does just an incredible job they go up early, they haul everything, they set everything up, prepare the, all that. It was amazing how this part, and so they wanted to do something. So is Mike in here? Where is Mike in here, Mike Allen? There he is. Uh, Bethany, can you help me? Let's, I got, we got something for you from the men just to say thank you. So would y'all help me thank Mike for all he did for us? Uh, incredible time. So, men, I know some of you, man, I didn't get, it didn't work out, my schedule. Don't worry. We're going to do it again in the fall. And in the fall, we go to the beach. So, spring, mountains, uh, fall in the beach. So, do not miss the next men's retreat. I promise you, you will be glad you went. Now, a couple things, very important. I would like to welcome all of our guests. Every week we have guests, and I need, I want to do a better job of making you aware. Uh, we have a Connect Center out in the lobby with information. All of your questions, I think, are in, and we have a gift for you. If you would, if you would go by there, we have a gift, and, and I, I, I've been meaning to say that, but I want to make sure and remind you, go by the little kiosk out there. Our people will greet you. They have a gift for you, and we just want you to know we're glad you're here. We want to answer all your questions, and so please go by there and get information about our church. Now, last thing, very important. Next Sunday is our birthday party. I can't believe we are nine years old, and uh, sometimes we act like a nine-year-old, but that's okay. Uh, so next Sunday is our party. We're going to have a, a big celebration, and we're praying for good weather, and here are some details that you need to know that I want to make sure you're clear about, because I know a lot of times what happens is you come and hear and come and come, and it comes Saturday night or that Sunday, and you're like, now, what was all that about the birthday party? So I want to make sure today you know about that. Number one, the service is at 11 o'clock. One service only. Next Sunday, 11 o'clock. 
If you come at 9, you're more than welcome to help us do lots of things to get ready. So you can come at 9 if you want to, but the service starts at 11. No child care, no nursery. We're all going to be out there on the football field. Uh, so I want to make sure everybody knows one service, 11 a.m. next Sunday. There is a lunch, a meal after the service. It is what we call potluck. That means, that means a lot of things, but what that means is you, the church, bring things to eat. Now, we will have, we'll provide some basic things, you know, some staples such as fried chicken and, and, and what have you, but, <laughs> but you need to bring stuff or we're going to be, you know, one-dimensional. So uh, bring your favorite, bring something you're good at, something you love, and uh, we'll have a meal right there. It'd be like old-fashioned uh, dinner on the ground type thing. And so be sure you bring it. And I, we are encouraging you to bring a lawn chair. I know many of you go to ball games and things. You've got your chair in the back, in the back of your truck. So bring those in case we, I don't know how many people are going to come. I think a lot of people are going to come because we normally have between 900 and 1,000 people in two services. So we'll have all together. And it's going to be one big family. You know what's going to happen next Sunday? You're going to see people and you're going to say, Y'all go to our church? I didn't know you went to our church because you go to nine, we go to 11. So it's going to be a, a, a party. And we're going to, we have lots to celebrate. Here's what I'm going to talk about. Now we're going to have church. We're going to worship. We're going to pray, and I'm going to preach a, a, a shorter version, and I'm going to talk about our past. I'm going to talk about our present. We're going to celebrate that. We're going to remember the past, rejoice in the present, and we're going to talk about our future. We're going to refocus for the next nine years. And so don't miss next Sunday. Come ready to party because we're going to have a good time celebrating all of God's goodness. I'm so glad you're here today. Now, I want you to get ready, uh, as Pastor Jason used to say, secure your phones and turn off your cups. So let's really, wait, he didn't say it exactly that way, but let's go to worship this morning. Enjoy yourself. Let's, let's come before the Lord this morning. Thank you all for being here. God bless you.
I worship you. I worship you. You are here, working in this place. I worship you. I worship you. For you are the way maker, miracle worker. As we go into our time of prayer this morning, folks, this altar is open to you. And you say, why come to an altar? The Lord tells you to come, you come, right? It's a place where you can meet with him and he will meet with you. And sometimes others will come down and meet with you as well and pray with you. The song says, Waymaker. It tells this beautiful message of how the Lord in your struggle and in your trial 
and in your tragedy can make a way for you. When there is struggle, there is a way that can be made. When there is hurt, there is healing. But perhaps sometimes we can be guilty of only trying to sell Jesus to those who are hurting. And I don't want to do that this morning. You may be here and you're the happiest you've ever been in your life. You got better health, more money, your kids behave. You just got no worries and no troubles. Without Christ, you're just as lost as the broken person who just got out of jail. We all stand in need of a Savior. Every last one of us, in good times or bad, He is our refuge and our strength. And without Him, no good time is good enough. No joy is strong enough. Because eventually even that runs out. So in this place, we would invite you all to Christ and say, bend the knee to him. Ask his forgiveness and seek his face. Let's pray. Lord, it is mercy and grace that has brought every one of us here today whether we are in struggle or we are in triumph this morning. God, we all need you. Lord, we all need you. We have needed you with the first breath that we have taken. And we will need you through the last. God, you are our refuge and strength. You are the place which we can hide from the storm, Lord Jesus, but you also empower us to weather it if need be. So God, in this place this morning, as people bring the struggles or the trials or the tribulations, we would ask, Lord, that you would visit them in those places, Lord Jesus. But God, in all things, help us, Lord, to, as we are able to approach you with gratitude, because God, we are blessed beyond measure. So Father, help us to steward the gospel well. Help us to steward our possessions well. Help us to steward this place and each other well. We are literally on a hill now and we are on display for Christ. Pray, God, that we act as faithful stewards and ambassadors of what you have given us, Lord Jesus, knowing that the world watches to see what Jesus is going to do. Help us to get out of your way and allow you to do it. And it is in Christ's name we pray. Amen. And you may be seated. God is our refuge and our strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth gives way, though the mountains be moved into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble at its swelling. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God will help her when morning dawns. The nations rage, the kingdoms totter. He utters his voice, the earth melts. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come, behold the works of the Lord, how he has brought desolation on the earth. He makes war cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the chariots with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Psalm 46.
at his feet. He breaks the bow and bends the spear and tells the wars to cease. Oh, mighty one of Israel, you are on our side. We walk by faith in God who burns the chariots with fire.
All right, y'all ready? Now, preacher, you know there's a big old eclipse coming. It's a big one. This is the big one. (laughs) Well, what do you think is going to happen? I don't know. But here's what I would suggest. Maybe get up and say, this could be the day. You know what? He could come back today and we wouldn't even have to worry about the eclipse. Because we don't know when he's coming back. I'll tell you what we do know. We know that he is coming back. Do you know that nobody knows other than the Father? The angels don't even know. Everybody's ready. They're, They're poised. They're ready for that command when he says, it's time. So I think the point is we know he's coming better get ready so that's the question that's my whole idea about the eclipse are you ready in case crazy things start happening just in case i I, is oh that signals the end time folks we already in the end times so we already that ship has sailed so uh, i don't know what's going to happen i would suggest let's look up And let's listen for that trumpet. And let's get ready. And perhaps if you're not ready for that today, this might be a good thing for you to work on today. And that is to get ready because he is coming back. And this thing is going to get, listen, it's not going to get better. I I hate to, I don't want to be the bearer of bad news. It's it's not going to get better here on earth. We're not going to reform this system. It's a mess. And it's going to, all of these things, need to happen for the end to come. So, uh, man, let's just get ready. I, You know, we've had a, a, a James, old James beat us up, man. That was a tough one. I, I've struggled my way through James. He just wore me out. I was, y'all have to understand, I get, convict, I, I get convicted before y'all do because I wrestle around with these messages way before it gets to you. So I get beat up before it gets to you. And then old James, then, and then we, we went through the passion of Easter. And the, the wonderful joy of his return. And, and uh, that, that, you know, Easter's heavy because of that passion time. I hope, I hope we, we reflected on that. So I just thought it might be time. Let's, let's talk about something good today. Let's talk about heaven today. How about that? Um, Next Sunday, we're going to have a, our birthday party, so that'll be different. But just, just a kind of a one-time thing today, let's talk about heaven. I want you to, to uh, look at Revelation uh, 21. and we'll, Revelation 21 and 22, what I, that's your assignment this week. I want you to read that. Read those chapters. So that gives us more and more detail about heaven. What's that going to be like? Well, we, we, it's not like we have no idea. He gives us a lot of things, a lot of descriptions about what it's going to be like. And so, uh, Revelation chapter 21 and chapter 22. And uh, so I want to read that and then we will jump in and do a little study, just a little quick overview about heaven. Heaven is a real place according to the scriptures. So let's look. Revelation chapter 21. Now, uh, chapter 20 leads us into 21 in verse 15 kind of brings a somber thought to us. So let's go back to 20, verse 15. Whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Now we're going to go to something good. Verse 20, chapter 21, let's read verses 1 through 8. I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. And there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city. New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they will be his people. And God himself will be with them and be their God. Now, of all the things about heaven that makes it compelling, To me, that's the most important. Wherever it is, whatever it is, whatever it looks like, God himself will be with us. 
That makes it heaven. On top of all the other stuff, just cherry on top. But we are told in verse 3, God himself will be with us, and he will be our God. Now look at verse 4. What a beautiful verse. God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. The Bible is written in such a beautiful, descriptive, inspirational way. Can you imagine what that might be like? You know, I, I know sometimes I watch little children and may fall down, get hurt, and sometimes big children, things happen and they bring tears to our eyes. And sometimes, you know, mama comes and, and the baby's running up. And, of course, you know they got to have mama when they get hurt. I don't know how that works. But they, they, but they go to mama, and mama wipes those tears. It's okay. You're okay. That's a wonderful settling thing when mama does that. Can you imagine God doing that? God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death. Neither sorrow, no crying, neither shall there be any more pain. Somebody, you have an ache this morning? I discover new ones every day. That's because this body is in decay. It started when I was born. That's this life here, this body. But in heaven, there won't be any more pain. Can you imagine feeling good all the time? For the former things are passed away. He that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I'll make all things new. I'm a little concerned about some folks because I don't like change, brother. I don't have this way. Well, that's how I am. I ain't going to change. You might want to get ready for some change. <laughs> and it's going to be good change. Old things, which I identify with, will pass away. Behold, all... Can you imagine that? All things are going to be made new. And he said, write, John, you write this down. For these words are true. And well, I don't know about all that heaven stuff. John, write this down. This is true. <laughs> now, if I tell you something's true, I hope you can trust that. If God tells you something's true, my friend, you can take that to the bank. Oh, you don't need the bank. You can believe that. <laughs> when God says, John, write this down. Make notes. This is true. So I believe in heaven. He said to me, it is done. It's good as done. I'm alpha and omega. I love that. That's not vitamins. <laughs> that is the beginning and the end. That's who our God is. The beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. He that overcomes shall inherit all the earth, and I will be his God. He shall be my son. Well, preacher, does that mean if we, if we persevere? We'll, no, let me tell you what that means. That means that temptation and trials come to all believers. But through faith in Christ, believers can overcome every evil that comes our way. God gives us the ability to overcome. That's the blessing that we have. So, verse 7. I will be his God and he shall be my son. Verse 8. But the fearful and unbelieving... Mm, this is the other side of that beautiful, wonderful, heavenly coin. Unbelieving, abominable... Murderers, whoremongers, sorcerers, idolaters, all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. 
Heaven. Let's talk about heaven today. By way of introduction, I want to explain to you that heaven is a real thing and it is a real place. The Bible tells us of a wonderful city called heaven where God lives. It's a real place, just as real as where you live and where you are today. How do we know? Because God tells us about this wonderful city. Let's see. Let's look over Hebrews chapter 11. Look at verse 16. But now they desire a better country. You know, I, I'm prejudiced. I love the good old U.S. of A. I, I choose, I'm, I'm going to stick it out right here. Looking at my options. This is the place I want to be. Proud. Thankful. But they desire a better country. There is a better country. That is a heavenly country. Wherefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God. For he has prepared for them a city. Say, well, preacher, I don't like cities. You're going to like this one. (laughs) God made this one. Think of all the bad things you hate about Charlotte or any other big city. That's not going to be a problem with heaven. Because all those things aren't going to be... You don't have to worry about that. God made this city. So it's real. God made it. He has prepared for us a city. Let's see. Uh, Hebrews 12, 22. Look at that one. But you are coming to Mount Sion and unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to an innumerable company of angels. That's that heavenly city that we refer to as heaven. Now, let me try to describe this for a minute. And it's way beyond, uh, I, I would, I'd love to have an architect or mathematician or someone come up here who's much more qualified than me to explain to you about heaven. But let's see. Heaven is a city and it's four square. Oh, that's odd. What does that mean? Well, and again, I, I don't know that I can even grasp this concept, but here's what it means. It means as wide as it is long, and as high as it is wide and long. It's four square. Uh, it's it's got to be big because there's a lot of folks. And, and you can, you know what would be good? As you study this, this passage this week, as you study resources and dig in a little bit, you can actually kind of calculate some things that the scripture does give us. Tells us about heaven. Tells us some details. We're, we're not ignorant of, of heaven. Because there's a lot in there that talks about heaven. So do some, you know, you got the internet. Jump in there and do some figuring. Do some ciphering. And, and see what you can come up with. Four square. That is a unique city. It's unlike any we've ever seen before. John saw this city. He described it in the book of Revelation. Particularly chapters 21 and 22. God gave him a vision, a glimpse. God let him, you know why? Because he wanted John to be the scribe and write it down. You write about this, John. Let these people know what they got to look forward to. It's very large. Got a lot of people. It's very real. Heaven is the place where God lived even before he made the sun, the moon, the stars, and the world. Before he made the birds and the plants and the animals and the people that live in our world today. Heaven is a wonderful, beautiful, happy place. God says that anyone who trusted Jesus as, his, as their Savior can live in heaven with him forever. So I believe everybody has the choice and the opportunity to choose their eternal home. I believe everyone has that option, that ability to choose. I believe that God gave in the hearts of man a free will. To say yes to Jesus and all that comes with that gift. Or to say no and reject that gift. See, because if you get Jesus, you get all this. If you don't get Jesus, you don't get any of this. That's heaven. And, you know, the whole universe is operated from God's throne. It's interesting. Um, and, and we're going to find out about that. So first of all, I want to I talk to you about some things that you will not find in uh, things in, you won't find in heaven. 
See, everything won't be in heaven. If you got a bulletin, there's, there's just a, some, a description there so you can go through there. But let me talk to you about heaven. What, is not, what are we not going to find in heaven? And the first one is interesting. There's no churches in heaven. Well, preacher, I believe we're all going to go to church together up in heaven. Well, I don't believe we got, we're going to need have a church in heaven. I mean, right now we gather, we fellowship, we pray, we, we come before the Lord and, and, and we worship him. Uh, in heaven, you just walk right up to him, I think, <laughs> and, and be in his presence. No church is needed because they will not be necessary. We can go right up to God himself, the eternal God, and worship him in person. Well, preacher, what are we going to do all that time in here? Well, I imagine we could probably spend some time doing that. I don't think that's ever going to get old. God knows everything and keeps record of it all. And he does it from his throne we will live in his presence. Things that won't be needed. There won't be lights as we know them on earth in heaven. It, it, there, won't, there won't be. It'll be different. Uh, no need for the sun or the moon. Now, we needed that here, and God gave us those lights. He threw the moon up there and the, the stars out there to look at at night and be amazed by and the, the sun to give us heat and life and but in heaven, we won't need the sun or the moon. Why? Because <laughs> God is the light. It's all, it's, I don't even know if we can imagine what that's like. The glory that shines will be brighter than any planet or any light we've been, been familiar with here on this earth. He lights up all of heaven. His presence is enough. Oh, by the way, there's no night in heaven. So we won't need that anyway. I'm going to tell you something. You're not going to need a candle or your lamps. You're not going to need your flashlight in heaven. Because ain't no dark. There's no absence of light. All will be light. I know some of you, uh, some I know in particular, they, they don't like dark. Maybe bad experience of the nighttime. And there's fear of things you can't see. And it's a fearful thing sometimes. In fact, the Bible calls us children of light. So we won't need all that stuff in heaven. Oh, here's another thing there's not going to be any of. Ooh, I like this one. There's no sin in heaven. Can you imagine living in a world without sin? Sin is all the bad and the wrong things that people do. Here in this world. Oh, it's dark. It's a lot. It's bad. People are people are bad. The sin nature in heaven is no more. It's abolished. Not allowed. No sin allowed in the presence of God. He can't tolerate it. Incapable of sin in heaven. There will be no disobedience. All the parents say, Amen. There will be no staying up late at night worried about what my kid's doing. Not in heaven. There ain't no, there ain't no bad decisions. No bad attitudes in heaven. No anger in heaven. No stealing, no theft, no envying, no cheating in heaven. No fighting in heaven. Can you imagine a world without fighting and violence and hatred? Not allowed in heaven. Whew. It's going to be a good place. Pretty much all the things that make us sad on earth will not be in heaven. Not allowed. No hate. No vengeance. You see, on earth, doing wrong comes naturally. Because we live in this sin nature that's in, that we have in this body. We were born into that. Not in heaven. That sin nature is not allowed. That alone makes heaven be a place I want to be. There's only kindness and peace and love. That's worth going for. You know what else there's not in heaven? There's no tears in heaven. Sin brings heartache. 
and tears and pain. There's people sitting in here today, you're hurting. You're hurting in your heart. You, you're, you're trying to fight the tears back because somebody hurt you. Somebody did something to you. I, I hear all the time, well, preacher, I, I just have, have, have been hurt at church. I, I've had church hurt. And that's terrible. That's a bad thing. That's friendly fire. It's awful when that happens. Not in heaven. Not allowed. When we get lost, we lose hope. We have a broken heart. Don't know. I, I, I know a little bit just from my connection as a shepherd to the flock. I know a little bit about some of the hurts people go through. One of the greatest hurts that I've ever been familiar with is the hurt of a loss of a child. You're not supposed to have to bury your children. Some of you understand that hurt in here this morning. We cry, and sometimes we think the tears will not stop. So, my friends, there will be a day when the tears will stop. In fact, verse 4 told us that God himself... I don't know if... I wonder what that looks like. I got this old nasty blue... You know, I used to use a white one, but what's the point of that? It gets all dirty when you use a white one. It's all nasty. I wonder what God's going to use. Think about that. I don't know if he needs a hanky or not. I don't know. I don't know if he has a heavenly handkerchief. I don't know. But he's going to figure out how to erase not just your tears. All the pain that you've ever experienced here. Think about it. Gone. No more. Heaven. Would you like for God to wipe away your tears? Heaven, a place of continual happiness. Oh, another thing in heaven, that there ain't none. There's no pain. There's no death. This afternoon we will gather up on 73 and we'll have a time of viewing and, and uh, memorial for Junior Brigman. Wonderful family. A lot of folks in our church. You sit right over there. He'd come in and, and uh, usually had his cap and... and uh, uh, man, I really thank the Lord. I got to see him, what day was it? I can't remember. I got to see him because uh, it was almost time. And you know, it's amazing. Here's a man that was here a few days ago. And today, he's in heaven. According to what the scriptures tell us. As soon as his old soul left that He was a real encourager to me. He he was my he was my friend. And uh as soon as his old spirit soul left that body, Bible says it he entered into the presence of God. To be absent from this body is to be present. So I don't I don't feel sorry for him today. I feel sorry for us. He's good. Because He's experiencing some of this stuff we're talking about. Uh, there's no pain in heaven, no pain, no suffering. Can you imagine how much... We don't even need to go to the drugstore in heaven. How's that look in your budget? <laughs> you don't need aspirin. All that stuff you take, put into your body to help you feel better, don't need it anymore. That's going to be worth going for right there. Oh, no, you don't need any shots. <laughs> Can I get an amen? amen? You know, I, I lived in a little town, and, and we had a, 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 a town doctor. 
and he'd come to your house. He's an old man walk in there with his little satchel, little old bitty thing. I'm like, what in the world has he got in there? Well, I knew one thing he had in there. <laughs> it's about this long. <laughs> he'd say, oh, man. I, <laughs> that thing fixed everything. I mean, whatever you had, he'd give you one of those. Don't need that in heaven. Don't even need doctors. Because we'll be in the presence of the great physician under his care. Nobody going to have to have a cast in heaven. You can't even grow up till you get cast on you somewhere. Broken something. You might as well go ahead and just do one so you've got it, you got the cast out of the way. There will not even be a mosquito bite in heaven. How about that? No more hip replacements. Your knees will be good. Shoulders. The amazing thing, we will get up and always feel good in heaven. And you don't know, you don't need a vaccine. (laughs) Because there won't be any sickness. No, germs can't live in heaven. Not allowed. No accidents. New resurrected body. That one that's going to last forever. You won't need trade-ins in heaven. No cemeteries, no graveyards, no tombstones. All that's over. (laughs) Think about this. (laughs) We'll live as long as God lives. Say, "How, how long is eternity, preacher? I don't know. But as long as God's alive, we'll be alive. God be alive forever. All right, now, well, we'll be in heaven, preacher. I know we got some time. I got to hurry up, wrap us up here. Is anybody other than me nervous about the time? Thank you. Okay, good. That makes me, put me at ease a little bit. Because I'm watching it. I, I got the clock. I watch it. All right, here's what's in heaven. First of all, they're going to be streets of that's a thing. That is a true thing. And I've often wondered, well, what in the world is the significance of that? Why, why do, why don't we want to, you know, why do we want to have streets of gold? Here's why. Think about this. There's a principle here. The most valuable thing on earth will have the least value in heaven. Think about that. I mean, no, most valuable he could think about to talk about is gold, because that is that is was then and will continue to, and everybody, oh, buy gold. Well, why? Because it's more important than money or anything else. Well, not in heaven. That's the least valuable thing in heaven. Woo! Streets paved with pure gold. Most expensive material on earth will have the least value in heaven. Think about that. Big, beautiful mansions. John chapter 14 tells me that. Just give me a shack on the side of heaven. Now, listen, Jesus is building your house. And and you're going to have one that not ever been nothing like that here on earth because Jesus is building it, John chapter 14. I go to prepare a place for you. Pretty good architect right there. He is fixing my new home. You know what else is in heaven? There's a river. It's called the river of life. It flows throughout the city and it will provide, it'll bring life to everyone there. There's also a tree in heaven. It's called the tree of life. A fascinating tree. Now my thought, I think there'll be lots of trees, but I know there'll be one. And this tree will produce different kinds of fruit every month. We can't, we don't have any of those. What else is in heaven, preacher? Well, people. 
People, heaven will be populated with people. God's creation. Oh, you know what else in heaven is angels? Angels in heaven, how many? Well, we're told that 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands of angels. Whew. That's a bunch of angels. Well, what does an angel look like, preacher? They got, I'm not sure if all the, you know, the depictions that we know. I know we do know a little bit about cherubims and seraphims. You can read about them. They have wings and they, have, they protect uh, holy and sacred things. And, and, and so we know a little bit, but I don't know about all these angels. I don't know what all that looks like. Not sure, but there will be people. Maybe you know somebody who's in heaven now. You probably do. People in heaven that were here on earth yesterday. Absent from the bodies to be present with the Lord. Last thing, I, I got to quit. Last thing. You know what else in heaven? There's a book in heaven. For those of you that are book lovers, uh, I don't know how many books or what kind of books, but I do know one book. It's the Lamb's Book of Life, we're told. It's a record book. Because when you got saved, you, your name got recorded in that book. And you know what else is in heaven? Jesus is in heaven. He was here. Well, he was in heaven, and God sent him down here, and he accomplished his task, and then he went back to be with the Father. It's to prepare a place for us. He left heaven 2,000 years ago, and now he has returned to be with his Father. He took our punishment that we deserved for all of our sins. Sin must be punished, and Jesus took over all of that punishment on the cross. Took it all to the cross, took it to the grave. The scars in his hands and feet will remind us that he suffered so that we can go to heaven. In that book, all the names of all the people throughout all of history that have believed and trusted Jesus as their Messiah, their Lord, their Savior, their Deliverer, only the people in this book get to go in. You know, there's, there's uh, fables and tales and urban legends, and, and you stand before those pearly gates, and St. Peter's up there in this gigantic stand, and he said, why should I let you go to heaven? Y'all, that ain't real. That's not how it works. Well, because I did more good than bad. That's not how, y'all, people made that stuff up. That's foolishness. That's not in the Bible. It's not in the Bible that if I do more good things than bad things, I get, I get on this gigantic scale. And That's not in the Bible. John 14, 6 says, there is only one way to get into that door. His name is Jesus. There's only one golden ticket. And you don't get it on the Polar Express. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Nobody gets to my Father but through me. You're going to get God, you've got to get Jesus. Do you have him today? You know, you got your ticket? You know, there's certain things that you can put off and get by with it. My friends, this is not one. Please don't put this off. Punch your ticket today. Is your name in the book? This is your way to heaven. Jesus said, I'm the way. I'm the truth. There's no other way. All roads lead to heaven. No, they don't. Don't, don't believe that stuff. That's the lies of the devil. Believe, repent, that means agree with God that I'm, I'm a sinner. I don't like that because I'm proud. I don't want to admit that I'm a sinner, but I am. So we believe and, and we repent and we trust and we proclaim, we confess him as Lord. Heaven is beautiful. You know what else heaven is? Heaven is home. This ain't home. 
Home changes down here. Home changed when my daddy passed away. I was 19 years old, and I'll go home now, and it's not the same. A few years ago, I buried my mama. I go home now to the house, to Snow Hill. It's not the same because mama ain't there. Home changes down here. Heaven is home for those of you that are in Christ. I want you to bow your heads. I want you to close your eyes. Whew. Heaven's pretty amazing. Don't you want to go there? Shoot, I'd, I'd get in line today. I mean, I, I'm okay. I won't see my grandbabies, I, I, you know, but uh, that'd be a good thing. You got somebody there? I'm going to pray. Here's what I want you to do. If you, be, if you put this off, if you're uncertain, if you're insecure about heaven, if you don't know, if you're hoping, oh, I hope I'll make it. Friends, you don't have to. The Bible says you can know. You can know that your name is in that book. Shoot, if it were doing good, I'd beg you. But I'm just going to ask you. Because you have to make that choice. Nobody can make that choice for you. Would you say yes to Jesus? Would you agree with him that you are a sinner? And confess him as Lord? Father, I pray for us in this room today. God, would you give us a glimpse of heaven? Lord, may that be our inspiration to know what's ahead of us. God, I pray for that one or two or three today that isn't sure. We can never be good enough to earn our way. The only door is through Jesus. So God, may someone trust him today. May someone say yes to Jesus today as you write their names down in that Lamb's Book of Life. Father, thank you for this incredible... I can't even start to describe what heaven must be like. Thank you for what we have to look forward to. Thank you that one of these days we're going to be home forever. Thank you in Jesus' name. All right, it is family time, and you know family time is different. Uh, every week, it seems like we got different things, and I'm going to ask some folks to come out here and join me. Are the, where's the, come on up here, play pools. Do y'all know Bruce and Linda? I think many of you, if you've been coming here any time at all, you probably know this couple. Uh, I, I love these two, and it's rare that they're on the stage. They're usually out there doing other stuff because they're served really well. And so a while back, we had a missionary day, and we had some missionaries come, and we, we had an emphasis on missions, and, and our missionaries in Romania came and spoke. This is real dear to my heart, because Gerald and Kristen, they're my kids. Uh, Gerald's one of my boys. And more than that, he's God's boy. And they are missionaries to Romania. And old Bruce was, was paying attention that day, which he does most every Sunday. Oh, God was kicking you. Is that what was happening? Linda said. So be careful if you pay attention in church. Sometimes God does stuff. And I want Bruce to explain just real quickly what God said to him that day. Well, it's eight months in the making. We, um, I was going to go on a mission trip to uh, Nicaragua and got sick with COVID and didn't get to go. And for eight months, we've been trying to figure out what to do with a flight credit of $1,200. And, uh, and then these guys showed up. And um, we would have never dreamed up Romania in any of our thoughts. That's way bigger than us, but, but we serve a big God. These folks showed up, had a 10-minute conversation with them, and uh, we said yes to God's plan. His plan's way bigger than ours, like I said, and 
we just love you guys and we just appreciate for y'all. We just love for y'all to pray for us and you already have been and just we're just thankful for all your support and all your prayers to help us go serve God in a big way. And you leave when? We leave this evening at 6.35 p.m. for eight days. So y'all can get a good view of that eclipse. <laughs> um, so I... I, I, there are certain things we celebrate in this church. We celebrate when people get saved. We celebrate when people follow Christ in baptism. We celebrate when people surrender to God and say yes. And we celebrate when people like this listen. When God calls them. And they say yes. And so I want you to, I do this because I want you to do that too. You want me to go to Romania? No, I just want you to say yes. God might want you to go next door. That's, oh no. That's harder. Just say yes. Now here's, here's how we knew. Sometimes you pray, you wonder, well I think God wants, I'm not sure God showed me this. Well, it was real clear that God was in this. Because Bruce got this call and, and my first thought was, well what are we going to do with Linda? Linda's kind of, she likes, she's, she likes to stay home, girl. She's, and Bruce said, what do you think? And she said, yeah, let's go. I said, that's God right there. If ever I've seen God at work, that's God. So, and I know sometimes you might, oh, I could never do that. Yeah, you could person who thinks least that you could do something God called, yeah, you could. So here's what we're going to do. This is a surprise. They don't know this. Uh, I have a check from our church. I mean, it's not much, but this check says, we support you. We're your family. We stand beside you. Now, here's what I want you to know. Be, I'll be careful. I know I've been in this a long time. Somebody out there sitting there thinking, hmm, uh-huh. I'm thinking God might be calling me to do something. They're going to give me a check. <laughs> oh, I'm feeling all spiritual all of a sudden. Them church going to give out checks. Can, let, can I just go ahead and clarify that for you? Bruce and Linda were going to Romania. They already knew they were going to Romania. They didn't ask anybody for money. They're not going to Romania because the church is going to give them a check. The church is going to give them a check because they said yes to God. They didn't need our money. So just so everybody understands, we, you, we're not just passing out, you know, you say yes to God and this church is going to stand beside you. But don't be waiting on us to pay the way. We just standing here saying, yeah, Bruce. Yeah, Linda, you go. So we just want to say, Thank you. I mean, that's just, that's a, that's a. But I want you to know, folks, our church is going to stand beside people that say yes. We're going to pray. All right, I'm going to ask my missions team. Where's my missions team? Y'all, there they are. Y'all come on out here. And uh, is it Mike? There we go. And, uh. I, I love, we, we, are, our, we have an incredible missions team, and they work hard, and they're amazing, and uh, all of them are not here at this point, but here's some of them. And, and uh, man, I know, thank y'all, missions team, thank y'all for doing this, for, for supporting, and, and uh, we, we determined a couple years ago, God spoke to my heart, and I said, We're going, our church is going to do better at supporting our missionaries. We're about to start going over there. And helping them. So Bruce and Linda are going to go to help my friends, the Zemers. And he's going to build stuff. It's camps and ministries for children and all that. It's going to be incredible. So uh, I'm going to just get this microphone. Uh, Jeff, I'm going to ask you to pray a prayer of dedication for this, these people. Uh, and church, I want you to pray for them this week. You think about them. You pray for them. And uh, we are so, Linda, Bruce, so proud of y'all, man. Y'all inspire me for saying yes to God.
before I pray, they're kicking down the door so some of y'all can go next year with them. So get ready. Father, in your mercy and grace, um, Lord, you choose just the right moment, just the right time, just the right people, just the right circumstances, Father. Um, so thank you, Lord, for being just right. <clears throat> we pray for Bruce and Linda, Father, as they get on an airplane tonight or this evening to fly a long way <laughs> in those luxurious accommodations. Um, we pray, God, that you would give them rest, Lord Jesus, and we pray, Lord, that uh, when the door closes on that airplane, you would fill that space with your Holy Spirit, and you would comfort them, fly with them, Lord, walk with them, ride with them, Lord Jesus, where they go, and that once they hit the ground there, God, that you might empower them in ways that even they can't anticipate, mm -hmm. Lord, to be blessed, but to also be a blessing, Lord Jesus. I thank you, Lord, for the faithfulness. We know this is a big deal, Lord Jesus. This is a big deal. And we pray, God, even now, for the people sitting out here in front of us, Lord Jesus, who you are wanting to go next year, I pray, God, that you begin to shake the foundations of their heart and soul already. Thank you for loving us, for saving us, and thank you, Lord, for our family here. Amen. Thank you all for coming today. God bless you. You are dismissed. <laughs>